Sometimes it doesn't matter how large an army is if they can't break the will of the people who they are trying to impose their rule upon. Many of these battles would make life entirely different if it wasn't for strong soldiers defending their homelands. From small Greek city-states to feeding the vast Persian army to some of the most humiliating defeats suffered by the Americans in the 19th and 20th centuries. Here are some of the most insane military disasters throughout history. But first, we'd like to give a quick shout out over here to this person for leaving us this comment. We appreciate your insight and we'd like to hear all your comments, so keep it up. Number 9. Battle of Marathon The Battle of Marathon took place in 490 BC on the mainland of southeast Greece, was proved to be a decisive victory for the Athenians. King Darius I made it his goal to annex all of Greece, but some strong soldiers would say otherwise. The Persian army had already conquered many of the Aegean islands. The Athenians gathered at a strategic plain, which would likely be the same area where the Persians would land, roughly 25 miles from Athens. Once the Persians landed, they were met with 9 to 11,000 soldiers made up of various tribes loyal to Athens. The Spartans refused to partake in this one since they were kind of busy with a festival at the time and they didn't really feel like they would be affected. The Persians vastly outnumbered the small Greek force with 25,000 infantry units, 1,000 cavalry units, and even 100,000 armed oarsmen who didn't engage in the fight. 600 ships landed at the Bay of Marathon. Fighting to save their independence, the Greek prevailed after a lengthy standoff and a running charge which surprised the archers. The Greeks' armor, training, and courage proved to be too much for the unorganized Persians who were attempting to retreat their ships. A runner ran from Marathon to Athens to announce victory but collapsed after exhaustion. Number 8. Battle of Teutoburg Forest The battle that took place here was devastating to the Roman Empire in 9 AD. Germanic tribes absolutely decimated three Roman legions, keeping them from invading their lands. The tribes began setting traps in the forest and the fatigued Romans were swarmed, which led to a mass slaughter. The Romans weren't marching through the best time of year and conditions were rainy and foggy, which gave the Germanic tribes an advantage. The Roman wooden shields and bows became waterlogged and essentially useless. As the Romans were marching, they were simply ambushed by chaotic barbarians who showed little to no mercy for the invaders. They managed to completely surround the force who was coming at them, throwing javelins. An estimated 15 to 20,000 Romans lost their lives, while other Roman soldiers were enslaved. For a while, no one really knew the location of the battlefield until these coins were discovered, which serves as a reminder of the chaos and ancient Rome's greatest defeat. Number 7. The Battle of Tours Known as one of the greatest European victories in history, the Umayyad invaders from the south sought to plunder more of Europe after they already seized Spain and southwestern France. The city of Tours was well known for its beautiful abbeys and other good places to plunder. Luckily, Charles Martel, who had some battle experience, blocked the path of the Umayyads by surprise and chose not to attack but rather to defend the path similar to a phalanx formation. He was able to use the forest to his advantage where he would hide the troops. This way, the invading armies couldn't tell the size of his army. Although he was heavily outnumbered, he managed to fight off their cavalry units during some light skirmishes. Not wanting to wait too long because winter was coming, the army attacked at full force, but the Frankish soldiers were much better equipped with heavy armor and battle experience. When word got out that the Umayyad's loot was being plundered back at the camp, a disorganized retreat took place and Abdul Rahman was killed at that time. The Franks didn't chase down the retreaters fearing an ambush and after the smoke was cleared, scouts reported that all the ambushers had fled for good. An estimated 1,000 Frankish were lost, but a whopping 12,000 Umayyad had met their end. Many have speculated what the world would be like if the Frankish lost this battle. What do you guys think would have happened if they lost? Let us know in the comments section and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. Number 6. The Siege of Malta The Great Siege of Malta took place between the Christians of Europe and the invading Ottomans who saw control of the Mediterranean Sea in all of Europe. This just so happened to be the home base for the Knights Hospitalier who were linked to the fighting force of the Crusades and eventually driven out from the island of Rhodes only a few decades earlier. The order lacked a permanent home and settled in Malta. The Ottoman Emperor Suleiman the Magnificent wanted to finish them off and sent a large fleet of ships from Istanbul, the largest fleet since ancient times which consisted of roughly 193 vessels, 131 galleys, and other various ships. Luckily, the shores of Malta were well fortified which made disembarkment of troops a lot more difficult. An estimated 130,000 cannonballs showered the fortifications and the siege lasted for three months, three weeks, and three days. The Turks suffered heavy losses while capturing St. Fort Elmo and executed those who survived. 
The Turks gave up on the invasion after suffering heavy casualties, partially thanks to the Spanish reinforcements. Some estimate up to 35,000 casualties for the Turks, and only 6,100 for the Knights Hospitale. Number 5. The Siege of Vienna Another squash invasion of Europe, the Ottoman Turks were making their way west, and for a while, it didn't seem like anything would stand in their way. They had already conquered much of Eastern Europe and the Balkans, and had their eyes set on the largest city of Austria. Half of the country was already occupied by the Ottomans. Their army arrived in late September of 1529 in poor health after a long march throughout Eastern Europe while it was heavily raining. The Ottomans began digging mines and tunnels in order to get past or bring down the walls. With the muddy conditions, it would make this tactic very difficult. Some believe this was just a preliminary attack to weaken the city before the real invasion would take place on the 12th of September 1683. In any case, the second invasion of Vienna was unsuccessful and turned out to be an even bigger disaster. In this case, the Viennese had been preparing for another attack and would rightfully slaughter roughly 8 to 15,000 Ottomans outside the city walls, while an additional 5,000 were captured. Kingdoms all over Europe sent help to the front lines, and Polish cavalry units known as the Winged Hussars played a big role in finishing them off. The defeat would prove to keep the Ottomans from advancing too far west, and the empire would begin to decline. Number 4. The Battle of Little Bighorn Typically, you would expect the Americans to be able to beat Native Americans in a majority of battles against them simply because they have better weapons. It wasn't supposed to be people with guns losing the people with bows and arrows, but not everything went according to plan. Sometimes the will to defend your homeland is stronger than firepower. Americans had originally granted a large amount of land for a Native American reservation, but once gold was discovered, all deals were off. The Battle of Little Bighorn was one of the most humiliating defeats in the U.S., led by General Custer, and it took place in southern Montana. The U.S. assumed there were no more than 800 hostile units in the area, but they vastly underestimated the unification of the tribes there. Also known as Custer's Last Stand, this took place in 1876, and he lost a large portion of his men while trying to go against 10,000 Lakota warriors. They retreated to what was known as Last Stand Hill, where the remaining forces were taken out in less than an hour of engagement, including Custer himself. Number 3. The Battle of Suomo Salmi Also known as the Winter War, this battle took place between December 7th of 1939 to January 8th, 1940. The Soviet invasion would prove to be one of the worst mistakes made by the Union and resulted in heavy casualties on one side. The Finnish city of Suomo Salmi was captured fairly easily, but the Soviets wanted to reach the city of Ulu and divide Finland in half. The Finns are people who embrace the snow and are used to getting around by means of skis and sled, in contrast to heavy equipment like the Russians. But possibly one of the biggest mistakes the Soviets made during this invasion was not wearing snowy camouflage, which made pretty much every soldier an easy target. When you're armed with a sniper rifle, this would be like shooting a fish in a barrel, and crafty Finns were able to take advantage of it. Much equipment was looted also and used against the Soviets, including 43 tanks, 71 field guns, 29 anti-tank guns, 260 trucks, and 1,170 horses. In one of the most lopsided victories in history, the Soviets lost 21 to 27,000 men, while the Finns only lost 750 men and 1,000 dealt with injuries. This photo here shows a Soviet soldier who basically froze during the invasion attempt. Number 2. The Raid of Dieppe the Canadians led the Raid of Dieppe in 1942 in northern France, similar to our D-Day invasion but only two years earlier. It turns out they would pretty much get mowed down by German machine guns. Someone forgot to tell the Canucks that hockey sticks won't work well on the battlefield. This battle included a thousand British troops and 50 United States Army Rangers to try to help them out. The main goal here was to destroy coastal defenses, port structures, and strategic buildings in the area. And guess what? None of these objectives were successful. Out of roughly 5,000 Canadian troops who made it to the shores that day, only 2,200 were able to make it back to Great Britain. The Royal British Air Force also suffered some serious losses this day, losing 64 Supermarine Spitfires, 20 Hawker Hurricane Fighters, to name a few. While hoping to lure the Luftwaffe into a dogfight, they were shot down by anti-aircraft guns. The Germans also seized or destroyed quite a few tanks and landing boats along the shores. The surviving Canadians were pretty much taken as POWs. Don't mess with Canada, folks. And number one, Battle of the Philippines. Although the Japanese might have won this battle, they wouldn't win the war. The Battle of the Philippines is often considered to be the greatest defeat the Americans have ever suffered. This took place between 1941 to 1942 and was an invasion by the Japanese Imperial Army to take control of the Philippines to the south. These islands were strategic for the Japanese in order to take control of the South Pacific. 
The Philippines at this time were home to many U.S. military bases, and immediately after they were bombed by Pearl Harbor, they engaged in this battle of epic proportions. The Japanese landed on the northern island of Bataan, just south the coast of Luzon. The Americans and the Filipinos had trouble fighting off the Japanese, who were well equipped with a large arsenal of aircraft and artillery. Nonetheless, 100,000 troops were taken prisoner as a result, and 46,000 were either killed or wounded. The Japanese only suffered roughly 17,000 casualties. So which military disaster did we leave off this list? Let us know in the comments section and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video.